I've finally done it. I've solved Ruin's ending and Roxy, well, she's the key to it all. I mean, think about it. She's the last node of MXES. Why? How come it isn't Freddy? How come it isn't Chica or Monty? Why does it have to be Roxy to be that last security node? And then it hit me and Ruin's ending finally became clear because Roxy at the end of Ruin becomes a savior. Whereas at the beginning of Security Breach, she can only be described as being extremely hostile and nasty to the pro tag Gregory. And this in itself is extremely interesting and I haven't even got onto the security node bits yet. So how does she suddenly switch from being a horrible wolf to this hero we see at the end of Ruin where she saves Cassie against the Mimic? You've just got to look at her in Security Breach. She follows and chases Gregory everywhere, hunting him down. She loses her eyes, thanks to Gregory, and continues to chase him down even more relentlessly, demanding her eyes back. She's very vicious with the wording she chooses to use, such as, I bet you don't have any friends, which is pretty harsh to say to a kid. I bet you don't even have friends. But underneath this really hard exterior, she has the biggest character development in the entire franchise. She's actually extremely vulnerable. We hear her crying in her own green screen room. <laughs> And all of this seems to point towards her putting on a front, a fake persona. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, well, she was clearly crying in her green screen room because she's lost her eyes, she's ugly. Well, that isn't true because it happens before she loses her eyes, before any type of disfigurement happens to her, before she loses her hair like she has done here, clearly showing she has that fake it till you make it kind of mindset. She's crying because she genuinely believes that nobody likes a loser. And in her eyes, under all of that, she believes she is a loser herself. And this is where things take a really interesting turn because as we know she has really special eyes she can see through walls with them because we give them to freddy and freddy's like wow i can see everything now you look different to me i can see movement through the walls and when we first come across Roxy in Backstar Row, where we're climbing through the vents, she says a really interesting voice line. She says, Your fans are watching you right now. Clearly, she's already spotted us through the walls, up there, watching her in her green room through the grate. And obviously, just for clarity, at this point, the pizza plex is still open. So Gregory, yeah, he's in the vents, he shouldn't be there. At this point, Vanessa hasn't told the Glamrocks to go looking for Gregory. Hence why she assumes a fan is in the vents watching her, because she can see him. Now, we know during the events of Security Breach, she loses her eyes, Gregory literally rips them out of her skull, and anyone who has their eyes taken out is going to be pretty pissed off about that. It completely explains why she's so annoyed at Gregory and wants to stop at nothing to get her hands on him. She wants her eyes back and wants revenge, right? Give me back my eyes! But then why is she so nice towards Cassie when all the personality we've been shown is just all me? Believe it or not, at first, she wasn't. She probably would have done exactly the same thing like she did with Gregory. Obviously, we know she grabs Cassie's arm, where Cassie lays out a little scream. Now, we know Glamrocks are not supposed to hurt any visitor or guest. Freddy confirms this and says it goes against their programming. So when Roxy grabs Cassie's arm, she malfunctions. And that's why we hear her say this. I'm sorry. I... Error... And at that point there, that's exactly what happened to Freddy on the stage when he saw Gregory. He glitches out and then reboots into safe mode. And this is what happens to Roxy. She glitches out, then she runs off and more than likely boots into safe mode. This would have also completely purged any remains of the glitch trap virus, meaning she's basically factory reset. Hence why she sounds so robotic when Cassie sees her under the forklift. All the sassiness, the attitude, the narcissicity, if that's even a word, has been removed and she's just a kind soul. And how do we know? Oh, she's been reset? Well, just listen to her wording throughout this conversation with Cassie. Have you booked your party? I'm sure your friends will show up this time. She clearly believes that the pizza plex is still open, serving customers. Exactly the same thing happens with Eclipse. Well, sun and moon. Come back soon and have a fascinating day. When we reboot Sun and Moon, they effectively go back to their old state. They've been factory reset because Eclipse believes that they're going to have children in there the next day. He even says, I have to get you out. I have to tidy up because the kids are coming tomorrow. I need to clean up before we can open in the morning. All oh, this place will be flooded with kids. And exactly the same thing happens with Roxy. She booted into safe mode, reset, and we clearly see this in her dialogue. But this is where things get even more interesting because we know Roxy to be the last security node. Now, multiple things are going to happen here because this is going to take some explaining. Because like I said, I do believe she is the key in solving the entire ending of Ruin. This bit leads to the heart-wrenching part where we have to basically deactivate Roxy with the Fazbear wrench. But because we're so caught up in this emotional moment between Cassie and Roxy and her holding her hand and all oh, the tears are flowing, you 
never actually stopped to think and ask the question, how is she even the last security note? Because let's not forget here, it's told that Gregory is the one who sets up MXES. So presumably, he would have set up the entire grid with all the security notes. And I know, I know, you might be thinking, well, where's the evidence for this? How do we know it was Gregory? The story basically tells us that, but we also know Gregory had been down to the Mimic's room, literally outside the Mimic's room, because Gregory's backpack, which he's wearing throughout FNAF Security Breach, is sitting there with his name literally on it, Gregory. Clearly giving us evidence that Gregory had been in that room and likely set up MXES. Not to mention, MXES was not present through Security Breach's playthrough, or even mentioned or physically as an entity nowhere to be seen. MXES was clearly set up post-Security Breach in a ruined pizzaplex by the one and only Gregory. But if he set this up, he obviously set up the security notes. How did he put a security note in Roxy? And why would he have put a security note in Roxy? Surely it would have made much more sense to put one in Freddy, for example? An animatronic, which is actually friendly? Isn't that right, Freddy? Twisted animatronic is my superstar. And that there is one reason why he didn't want to put a node in Freddy. Anyone could probably access him and deactivate it. Whereas you imagine Roxy. She isn't going to let anyone close. Let her not mess with her in any capacity. I mean, in Help Wanted 2, she wouldn't even let the technician lose eye contact. Eyes front. And if he does, then he basically loses his head. But there's a problem with this. Roxy would have super hearing at this stage. We know she has great hearing anyway. She can't see you, but she can definitely hear you. And there's one person she loves more than anybody else in the entire world. That's Gregory. The person who made her the way she is, took her eyes, disfigured her, and everything else. Do you think she's just going to let him walk right up to her, implant a security note, and let him walk away? No chance. Okay, okay, okay. So let's say he didn't physically implant the node. Let's say he did it remotely. Something isn't quite right because the first node we come to teaches us the mechanics of the game basically and it tells us that all nodes have a child node to deactivate. You know, like a physical entity which you go to first, click it and it unlocks the node for you to then hack it basically. Well, Roxy doesn't have this. Another point, at no point in the game is any security node able to move around. They're all in fixed positions where Roxy is physically mobile. She's literally moving everything everywhere. Whoops, her leg has come off. She's proper ruined now. And thirdly, she doesn't look like a security node. And what I mean by that is all the other security nodes are color-coded blue or red, depending on whether you've picked up the child node or not. But Roxy, she's actually glowing green. I'm sure you've probably worked it out by now. Roxy wasn't a security node. There was no way she was going to be a security node. Gregory wouldn't have been able to get even remotely close to even make her one. It feels exactly like the callback with Eclipse, where you basically reset him slash deactivate. And this is exactly what happens with Roxy. You're being told by the evil Helpy, who's working with Gregory, who's obviously the Mimic at this stage, who tells you to deactivate Roxy. Because the Mimic probably knows that Roxy is a huge threat. I'd also like to point out something else which might line up correctly. Cassie's father. He could be the one who set up the nodes in MXES, doing Help Wanted too, because we know that was set after Security Breach and before Ruin. We also know that Bonnie was his favourite. Cassie tells us this. So he made MXES look like Bonnie, or aka a blue rabbit. He would also know that Roxy was his daughter's favourite. So he made the last security node Roxy. But because there's very little proof, I'm going to have to discard it even though it does fit quite nicely. So for the sake of this video, we're going to say that Roxy was not a security node. So then why would the Mimic want her deactivated? And how is she the key to solving the ending? We know Roxy comes to save Cassie at the end, but what we don't know is how she gets from under that forklift after being deactivated, clearly unable to move it in the first place when we find her, but then is somehow able to miraculously move it, come back to life, and save Cassie. Well, I'm not going to go into detail because it is a big theory in itself, and I recommend checking this video out after I've finished to explain explain all the details. Because believe me, it's a full video in itself just explaining that. The Mimic wanting to deactivate Roxy tells me something. He sees her as a threat. Why? Why would another animatronic want to hunt another animatronic, in this case the Mimic? We're missing something here. And it's exactly the same reason Roxy comes to Cassie's aid at the end. She attacks the Mimic there. That tells me that the Mimic must know something about Roxy, which we don't. I mean, the Mimic doesn't tell us to deactivate Monty, Chica, the Freddy? Specifically, just reboot sun and moon and deactivate Roxy. And the reason I think he's saying to deactivate Roxy is because obviously, well, what we see at the end, Roxy comes and attacks the Mimic. But she doesn't just attack the Mimic. She saves Cassie, saving a child. That's in her programming. She's a protector. She has that green aura. She's protecting 
infecting someone. Now there's an entire argument to say that when we rebooted her, we left it open to the network and a spirit went inside of her. Not gonna discuss that in this video, but it is a possibility. Mimic may have known this. But there's something we're completely forgetting here, and that's the entire plot of Ruin itself. Mimic wanted to lure Cassie down to let him be free. And the only way he was getting free from that basement is via one of the elevators. And out of the two elevators, only one of them works because Freddy says there was only one way down and back up. Because at that point, they didn't know about the second elevator and Freddy says it's a one-way trip. This elevator does not appear to follow any safety protocols. I do not think it can survive more than one trip. That would mean that out of the two elevators, that one is now going to be out of service and the only other one requires a Faz wrench. The only person on site who has that Faz wrench is Cassie. Hence why he lures her down there in the first place. He needs her, the Faz wrench and her skin somewhere to hide so he can escape the pizzaplex. Roxy being fully sentient, a protector, potentially possessed, would know this, would want to save Cassie, would want to save any child. The mimic wouldn't allow this. Hence why he asks you to deactivate her. He probably also knew that the actual Freddy with Gregory wasn't in the pizzaplex because Freddy would have done the same thing. Freddy's also a protector. We physically see him fight Vanny and even fight Burn Trap in the Burn Trap ending. But it doesn't end there because as we know there was hidden voice and dialogue between the fight with Roxy and the Mimic. Now again done a huge video on that because there's so much to break down but in a nutshell at the end of that fight you kind of hear what sounds like either A a roof cave in separating Roxy and the Mimic from fighting or B someone falling through a sinkhole. Now we know the Mimic wouldn't have fallen into a sinkhole or falling below into another cave system because the Mimic actually chases the protag Cassie throughout the mine or cave or whatever it is to that elevator at the end. But Roxy on the other hand, she could have easily have fallen into that sinkhole to something further below. And what would be below the FNAF 6 pizzeria? Well, it could be quite evident. That elevator we are using could be the maintenance elevator down to sister location. Roxy could have fallen through into the sister location bunker. Because we know there's some evidence that the pizza plex was actually built on top of the sister location bunker. We see Mike's room, which is obviously from sister location. We see the scooper, which could potentially be from the sister location, although it is a different scooper. We we know that the FNAF 6 pizzeria was also connected to the Afton house, so there is evidence to possibly say that the sister location bunker could be below the Mega Pizza Plex. Roxy falls down into it, and this is where things get really interesting. The elevator of ruin, as we know, gets cut. The elevator goes hurling towards the ground, and rather than smashing into the floor, it actually smashes through the floor, going down into the old sister location bunker, a floor below, which was sealed off. And as we know, the elevator comes crashing down, comes to a stop, and we hear a voice crying out shouting Cassie and that voice is from Roxy. Roxy having fallen through the floor herself was in the sister location bunker now with Cassie they reunite together bringing us on to the DLC 2. But there is one thing wrong with this entire theory. We presume the call out at the end is Roxy saying Cassie's name. It could quite easily be the mimic. Now I'm not going into detail on it you can watch my other video because that's a lot of detail breakdown but in a nutshell Roxy is indeed the key to this entire ending as I've just discussed she is the one who matters the most out of all of this in Ruin. She holds the key to the next part of the story. Whether it's going to be in sister location or whether it's going to be something entirely. Whether that voice at the very end was the mimic or was Roxy. She is the key. And I think we've basically uncovered what's to come next. And I would absolutely love to hear your thoughts and theories on this. And if you did enjoy it, give it a like and subscribe because we work very hard on these videos. I'm Twisty from Twisted Animatronic. Stay safe out there, superstars. Be sure to like and subscribe. Twisted Animatronic is my superstar.